Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as usual I will start with a little bit of announcements and the first one is that if you live in driving distance of Columbus, Ohio, Neil Barnard is going to be here on June 19th, that's a Monday night, 7 o'clock, and he's going to do a lecture on his new book about cheese, Escaping the Cheese Trap. He's always an entertaining speaker, he always has interesting things to say and to, um, and to teach us, so uh, you don't want to miss it. You do want to call us for reservations, however because he always draws a crowd and we have always turned people away uh, because he has such a big following. So uh, June 19th, Monday night, 7 p.m., call our office and make a reservation. Um, the second thing is we just have a couple more weeks until summer semester starts. There are two things going on that you want to know about. One is I am going to teach a class on cancer, nutrition, and uh, treatment for cancer um, on Monday nights at 9 p.m. It's a 10-week course and uh, we're going to get into a lot of interesting things. Uh, this is not going to be one of those eat plants, prevent cancer, end of story thing. This is 20 hours of lecture with interesting assignments to do and a lot of discussion and you're going to learn a ton. The other thing is the Diet Lifestyle Intervention course is offered three times a year but only in the summer do we have the celebrity instructors which include Neil Barnard, Alan Goldhammer, Dr. Esselstyn, Ralph Moss, Dr. Schultz, Dr. Sanger. We got all the lineup that you want to learn from personally. So um, if you want information on any of that stuff, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. We can even set up a time to talk. If you've thought about careers in healthcare, or you are a healthcare professional and you don't like what you're doing anymore, um, let's talk. You know, I can schedule a time to call you and we'll chat about possibilities, okay? All right. Um, today we are going to talk about screening and I have two things to talk about. One is thyroid cancer screening. According to the final report from the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, asymptomatic adults should not be screened for thyroid cancer. Um, according to Task Force member Karina Davidson, she says, quote, while there is very little evidence of the benefits of screening for thyroid cancer, there is considerable evidence of the serious harms of treatment such as damage to the nerves that control speaking and breathing. I would say damage to the nerves that control breathing is pretty serious. The task force designed a D rating for thyroid cancer screening, the lowest possible score, stating that, quote, there is moderate or high certainty that the service has no net benefit or that the harms outweigh the benefit. The task force cited evidence showing that while the incidence of thyroid cancer detected via screening has increased quite a bit, during the last 10 years there has been absolutely no change in the mortality rates, making population screening essentially meaningless and useless. The recommendation does not apply to people who have symptoms, which can include hoarseness, pain, difficulty swallowing, and lump swelling and asymmetry in the neck. So just to put this in perspective, when, when people have symptoms, testing to find out what's going on is warranted, and doing as much testing as you need to to find out what's going on is warranted. It's the, it's the hauling of healthy people into medical facilities to test them to see if you can find something wrong that is a problem. While screening asymptomatic people, the most common diagnosis is low-risk papillary, thi papillary thyroid cancer, but there's no evidence showing that treating patients with this condition results in better outcomes. In other words, people would be better off not knowing that they have these conditions. In fact, 90% of them do not grow into conditions that require treatment, even when followed for significantly long periods of time. Uh, the USPSTF review included 36 studies with over 43,000 patients and showed that the risk of harm was 2.12 to 5.93 cases for permanent hypoparathyroidism per 100 thyroidectomies and 0.99 to 2.13 cases of recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy per 100 surgeries. So you're not reducing death, it's all harm. If you're not reducing the death rate, you're just simply harming people. Ann Capilla, MD, writes in an editorial that the slogan, check your neck, might be well-intentioned, but the recent recommendations should discourage this practice, which includes neck palpitation, ultrasound, or any other type of imaging. Another editorial is written by Dr. Gilbert Welch, who's authored several books and articles on the topic of population screening, overdiagnosis, and overtreatment. Dr. Welch says that the increase in the diagnosis of thyroid cancer has been a result of accidental discoveries from chest and neck CT and carotid ultrasound. And then this has erroneously led to deliberate screening. So if you start finding this stuff by accident, my gosh, there must be a lot of it there. So we'll just screen everybody to see what we can find. And even public service announcements that encourage all adults to get screened saying that um, 
uh, the, the announcements say that there's an epidemic of thyroid cancer and early detection will save lives and essentially scaring people into doing something that is against their best interest. The bottom line is that with the exception of pap tests, and we do too many of them here, um, population screening for cancer is not really effective. You're much more likely to do harm than to help somebody, asymptomatic people. We should just leave them alone, and if you end up with some accidental finding of thyroid nodules or some type of abnormality, be very careful and cautious about any additional testing and certainly any treatment. Now, the next uh, topic, or the next article here I want to talk about um, is about mammography, one of my favorite things to talk about. We're going to keep talking about it until we have more and more women saying no. In 2014, the Swiss Medical Board issued a report stating that population mammography screening could be expected to prevent one death from breast cancer for every thousand women screened, and the evidence did not show that mammography reduced breast cancer mortality. The report discussed the harms associated with mammography, which include overdiagnosis and overtreatment. The data are staggering. I've seen these data before, but they were included in the Swiss report. For every death from breast cancer prevented in the United States over a 10 year period, between 490 and 670 women have a false positive result leading to an additional screening test. Between 70 and 100 have an unnecessary biopsy, and between 3 and 14 are diagnosed with a breast cancer that would be better off not being diagnosed because it would not be, become clinically significant over time. The board recommended that no new mammography screening programs be instituted, that the existing ones should be time limited, and that clear information should be provided to women about the risks and benefits, which are not so many, um, of mammography before consenting to it. Well, as usually is the case, when anyone dares to question the efficacy or safety of mammography, cancer experts, and I would put air quotes around that, are horrified, called the report unethical. They further stated that the report was awful, now get this, because it would make women unsettled. As if it's better for women to remain ignorant that mammography is significantly more likely to harm them than to protect them than it is to know the unsettling truth. I mean, as if we're such delicate flowers, we can't handle unsettling information even if it would make us um, safer. Two members of the expert panel that prepared the report subsequently published an article discussing the evidence that they reviewed in the New England Journal of Medicine. And you see more and more of this type of thing happening where these types of reports are issued um, and the results are quite clear, not much to dispute here other than just people screaming and hollering about it. And nothing changes and so people have to write additional articles and that sort of thing hoping to get the word out a different way. Uh, well anyway, uh, Nicola Biller Andorno and Peter Junai, both MDs, report that as they began the project they were shocked to discover that the harms outweigh the benefits of mammography. They cite all kinds of studies including that Canadian study that I've discussed numerous times that involved 25 years of follow-up and clearly showed that there was more harm than benefit from mammography. And then another study, including over 600,000 women, that just showed no difference in mortality rates uh, as a result of mammography. Even more concerning, the two researchers uh, said, was the fact that American women think that mammography screening is effective. One survey showed that 71.5% of women think that mammograms reduce the risk of dying of breast cancer by 50%, and 72.1% believe that for every 1,000 women screened, 80 deaths would be prevented. The real number is one less death for every 1,000 women screened for 10 years. And you already heard earlier the ridiculous number of false positives and biopsies and overtreatment and that sort of thing. Biller and Damo and Junai concluded their article by writing, and I'm going to read this to you. It is easy to promote mammography screening if the majority of women believe that it prevents or reduces the risk of getting breast cancer and saves many lives through early detection of aggressive tumors. We would be in favor of mammography screening if, the beliefs, if these beliefs were valid. Unfortunately, they are not, and we believe that women need to be told so. I guess they're not so worried about the unsettling us part. From an ethical perspective, a public health program that does not clearly produce more benefits than harms is hard to justify. Providing clear, unbiased information, promoting appropriate care, and preventing overdiagnosis and overtreatment would be a better choice. You know, it just doesn't seem to matter how much research we have showing that mammograms are a bad idea. The medical profession, policymakers will not give it up. All right, that's all for today. 
I will be back to you on Thursday with more news. In the meantime, please pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. If you're interested in any of the things we're doing here, call me or write to me. Have a great day.